Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from executeautomation.com and welcome to another video of our Selenium Grid execution with Selenium. So in this video, I'll be talking about scaling and customizing Selenium with Selenium code. So in our last video, we discussed how we can execute the code with Selenium and we also saw how we can run a very super simple test with Selenium and how the grid just automatically pops up by creating the node and hub configuration for us and started working. But we did not see in our last video that how we can scale our local grid dynamically with Docker container because that's one of the major advantage of Zelenium itself while compared to your actual hub and node configuration in Selenium grid. So that's something that we're going to see in this particular video. And we are going to customize Zelenium as well. So we can customize the Zelenium's behavior such as turning off video recording, giving a build number, idle timeout, time zone, and doing some kind of other configurations that you can see in the list on the right hand side, along with setting the browser stack enabled configuration and sauce lab enabled configuration, all those stuff within Zelenium using our Selenium's desired capabilities. So you can see that this is the core snippet that you can see over here is basically the desired capability that we can set within our Selenium code that you can set the record video as false. If you feel like there is no need for the video at least, then you can do that. And you can also set the build number and then you can set the idle timeout and all those stuff. So these things that you can do within Selenium customizing configuration options. So these are the two couple of things that we missed in our previous video. And I hope this video is going to bring some lights on the existing video along with some of the customization of our framework so that we can see how we can run multiple tests in multiple different containers which are nothing but nodes and then spawning them automatically without even us to write even a single line of code. Let's quickly see everything in action and understand how things work. So for that I'm going to flip to iTerm terminal of our Mac operating system. Alright so this is my Mac OS once again and this is the iTerm that I discussed in our previous video. So this is the terminal window that I'm going to be using for execution of our Zelenium. So I'm going to quickly run this. So before running the Zelenium itself, let's quickly see what we are doing in our Docker container. So if you see the Docker container that we have, if I do the Docker PS hyphen A, you can see that currently we don't have any container running. So meaning the Zelenium is currently shut down and nothing is currently running in our container side. And now if I start this Zelenium, so you can see that the Docker run and then we're saying that you can just run this Zelenium in this particular port number. And these are something that you need to understand The docker.soc is basically uh, intercommunication within the Docker and Docker. So Docker within Docker. So these are the concepts that we'll be talking maybe in understanding the ABC of Docker video series in a couple of days. And then this is another virtual mount path that you can set within your local directory that all this video is going to sit over there and then this is the privilege that you're going to set for the Zelenium to start right so now I'm going to start this Zelenium so you can see that the Zelenium is currently running and now if you go to the docker ps hyphen a to see the containers running you can see that currently we have like a Zelenium and two nodes running for running our Zelenium grid so everything is all good here and now if I just bring my uh, code that we discussed in our previous video, I'm just going to go all the way to the testng.xml file. So these are the two tests that I'm currently running. And then if I run the selector test, you know what is going to happen. Basically, it is going to run the test and then it is going to show us the report in the Selenium grid. So in the meantime, while it is currently running, I'm also going to show you like how it looks like in the uh, local uh, grid dashboard and stuff. So local grid, local host. So this is the admin live. So you can see currently it is showing us things in live. The execution is happening. And similarly, we can go to the local host uh, dashboard. So that's where all the videos are going to be rendered. And there is this console where you can see like how many tests are being executed. So we have this dashboard. We have this live preview. The tests are currently running and this is the dashboard right so these are three things that we saw in our previous video those were just working fine without any problem but now what i'm going to do is 
I'm going to scale my test to see how it actually works. So basically, that's the power of Selenium itself and how our test is going to be scaled automatically based on number of requests or threads that we are spawning in. So for instance, within our code, if I go to my IntelliJ once again, you can see currently we are running two tests, like test one and test two, and they are currently in parallel as we discussed in our course already, like how that you can set the parallel and you can see that suite is also running a uh, test in parallel. But I want to run a couple more tests for instance, like I want to run more than three or uh, four or maybe like seven tests in parallel, something like that. So if I want to do that, I can just do something like this. So I'm basically going to scale my test to just adapt these changes automatically. Something like this. As you can see that currently I have added a couple more tests like 3, 4, 5 and 6. And these are pretty much the same uh, test is going to be executing the same login test for us basically. But the thing is that this time it's going to be calling different methods. So I also need to change or maybe add some more methods to our test runner because our test runner currently has only two tests in here, like uh, login test one, something like that. But I also want to integrate some more uh, methods in there. So I'm just going to bring them all so that it makes more sense than what it's currently have. So I'm just going to copy paste the code basically over here like this so that it's going to be like it's until i guess it is until test four uh and we are executing how many tests until test four right so you can see that currently i have many tests this time uh and i'm going to execute all these tests in parallel and i'm going to see how the selenium is going to automatically scale our uh, test to be executed in multiple different nodes so that's that's the whole intention of this whole video right so if I go to the uh, bash once again, and if I just do a docker ps hyphen a, you can see that these are the two different uh, nodes currently running that we know already. And if I go to the dashboard here, over here, you can see the dashboard has generated this uh, videos maybe. And then these are the grid uh, console. And this is the live preview that we already know. So now if I just want to run my test this time, let's see what's going to basically happen. So that's where the magic begins so if i just run this test this time so what happened is you can see there are multiple tests running in multiple different threads in parallel and if you go to the item here this time so let the test to spawn because currently the test has not spawned yet all right so the test has started spawning in and now if i just do a docker ps hyphen a this time do you see we already have one two three more uh, containers automatically created for us and these are different containers automatically running for us in just like a couple of seconds before and the tests are also running in parallel and now if I go to the dashboard uh, maybe the live preview you can see automatically there are so many machines magically happening is being created and these are running tests in parallel which is really really amazing to see a great magic happens without even us to do anything so you can see like there are six different containers running for us automatically scaled that's really cool and you will see eventually that the videos are going to pop up in this dashboard these are some of the coolest thing i would say which is available in selenium out of the box and it scales things for you automatically and if you are going to connect with sauce lab or browser stack and other things you can also give the configuration in the desired capabilities and then if the browser that you're looking for is currently not available then automatically Zelenium is going to push those code to those providers and then it's going to run the test. That's really cool. So this is one great power of Zelenium which is available out of the box and we never discussed that in our previous video. And you can see that this just completed so fast and so quick. Amazing, right? So this is the auto scale power of Zelenium. The another feature that I was talking about is the customizing the configuration of Zelenium itself. So basically, all that we have to do is to go to the test initialize.cs file within our uh, framework. And you can see we have, we have something called as initialize browser method. And this is where our browser initialization happens. So if I go here, you can see we have this desired capabilities. So we can now make use of our desired capabilities feature to start writing the code 
and then we can start implementing that what we are looking for. So the desired capabilities that I was talking about is going to be holding all the timeouts and the version numbers. We can also pass the video recording. So basically I don't even have to give the video recording option to be true most of the time because that's really, really time consuming. So I can just write code something like this like capabilities dot set capabilities of required video as false, which means it's not going to record the video. And then you can also set the capability uh, of the build number of 1.4.1, which is basically the default number usually, and that you can set that as well. And then you can set the capability of the idle timeout as 150, which is really cool. So you can do all of them in here. And yeah, let me save this. And now if you run this particular code, it is going to generate these custom codes for you within your execution and now if you go to the execution you can see that basically it is going to run the test based on that configuration and it also sets the video recording as false which was not the case before and now you can see that the containers are being created and do you see there is something called as video recording is disabled this is really cool so you can set just one liner there and automatically the test execution is customized for your need and you will see that eventually that particular configuration is going to set within your framework. That's really cool. So this is how you can customize the test execution and creation of the containers and destruction of the containers automatically taken care of by the Selenium though within your code of Selenium and things are going to happen magically for you. That's really cool. And now if you go to the dashboard here yeah, let me refresh this. You can see that basically it is going to have no videos this time and it's going to have a build number as 1.4.1. This is the build number that I just gave over here. We can see it's 1.4.1. That's exactly it is. And then you already set the recording of video as false. That's why there is no recording. That's why the test execution is also very true, very fast. And also you can set the screen dimension and time zones and proxies and all those stuff within the desired capabilities of Zelenium. That way you'll have more control over your test execution and you can customize the test execution the way that you want. So that's it guys. This is how you can auto scale your Zelenium and also customize your Zelenium with much simpler fashion. So once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.